And welcome to my channel. Today we're at Cobtree Manor Park. This was once the home of Maidstone Zoo and that was where my father and my grandfather spent a lot of time. My grandfather, Colonel Gates, he used to look after the two elephants in the zoo and as we go through today we'll put through some of the history. In the last few years you've had a lot added to this. It just used to be quite a bare area You've now got the Sir, Sir Tyr, you've now got the Sir Gerard Tyrrell Drake Visitor Centre and a cafe over there with toilets and that. And they've built sort of a fort for children. You've got a castle and all that sort of stuff. Car parking is two pounds for six hours, and there's lots of walks that lead off here, off towards Cobtree Gulf, which is where the remainder of Maidstone Zoo once was. So let's go and explore see if any of the old zoo is left. So you're at the back of the car park now, so if you head over there, you're going through to where you can now get at the remnants of Maidstone Zoo. It's all around, there's loads of old bits from, I don't know what that was, from the former Maidstone Zoo where my dad and my granddad worked. So this wasn't the original entrance to the park. The original entrance to the park was much, much further over where Cobtree Gulf now is. And then it used to be connected by a little miniature steam train that would bring people from the car park to the entrance to buy their entrance tickets. And that train, as a young man, used to be driven by my dad before the Second World War. Also, Queen Elizabeth visited here, I think in the 50s, but let me try and find a photograph of that. We did have a photograph of that, of my dad, or my granddad, with the Queen on that day. But I think, sadly, that's been lost. This building here is the old elephant house. You can see it says Daisy on the side there. That was the name of one of the elephants. So this building has finally been repurposed 
and it's been used for other things now so for many many years around the side here you could just peer through where that door was and you could still see the two little sort of squash courts that are inside with the really thick chains that the elephants were chained up at night it does feel very eerie to think uh, I don't know what 60 70 years ago my dad would have been on a little steam train coming along here with very excited visitors and children to see all the unusual animals and really this is the only building left from the zoo now the former elephant house quite difficult to get the feel now 60 70 years since the zoo finally closed its doors but the land was all left to the people by Sir Till Drake and the only thing he put on the lease is that people were never allowed to be charged entrance to his land so the bit from here on now is still open to the public but this is Cobtree Golf Course and this is where originally um, there was a lot of buildings um, and the car park and the start of the train station which would bring people up this hill and then back to where the animals are and another bit of family history is it's gone now but in that distance up until about 1980 when it's demolished for some roadworks was a very very old house and that's the house where my granddad finished his days including during the second world war and he lived there with a housekeeper a young unmarried mum um, who and they lived in that big old house together and lots of things happened but on one day there was one tree in front of that house and a v1 bomb dropped and crashed into the tree and it was uh, i think it was done by a controlled explosion later and it was blown up and that did take out all the windows and everything and uh, i don't know how but my granddad ended up being permanently deaf after that explosion Over there, there's another part of the zoo that remains.
So we're looking down now onto Cobtree Gulf. And as part of keeping that family tradition of our family history linked to here, this was in the 1980s at the Gulf Clubhouse where Tracy and I got married.